Hey, this is Michael, and today on Loop the Jeep, I'm going to show you how to fix your headlight switch. Does this happen to you? I got to turn on my headlights, pull them out, and nothing happens. When I fiddle with it, I can get the floor lights to come on, so I know they work, but I just have to mess with it for a long time in the on position, and finally, sometimes the headlights will come on. Most of the time, they won't. Not great. Got to fix that. I'm going to show you how to right now. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. You're also going to need a replacement part. That's right. If you turn a screwdriver, you can do this entire repair yourself. And this part cost me $15. You can do this job yourself. Phillips screwdriver, replacement part, which for the 97 TJ is a DS357. DS357. I bought a part off of Amazon for 15 bucks. It's a standard part. We can talk about brands and such later, but essentially we're just replacing the headlight switch. I'll show you how that works step by step right now. So this is an electrical job. Anytime you do electrical work on your Jeep, it's a good idea to disconnect the battery first so you don't hurt the Jeep and you don't hurt yourself. Do that right now. The first thing we need to do is remove this screw. There's one here and there's one on the other side so we can remove this lower panel. It's only held on by those two screws and then it's seated in place at the bottom where it just kind of locks in. It just rests and is held at the bottom. I'll show you what I mean when we get the screws off. To remove this panel, you're going to pull it forward. It helps if you have the headlights all the way on. Pull it forward and then up to release the bottom hooks, and then it comes free and just pops over. See, here's the feet that I'm talking about that it rests on down at the bottom. That's step one. Step two, I found it easier if we remove this metal panel as well. It's held on by four screws, one here, two along the bottom, and then one up on the other side. They're also Phillips, and I found mine to be rusted on a little bit. So you could do it with a screwdriver. Uh, I found it to be slightly easier, and I needed to use a socket wrench that was a quarter of an inch. You could use any type of wrench to help pull those off, but they were a little bit stuck. Ugh, this one was the only one I could get. Next step is we want to remove this knob. If you reach in underneath here and on top, you'll find that there's a small vertical button. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. You depress it downward, and then you're able to pull this all the way out so it's no longer in your way. Next, this front black housing that the lighting rod came right out of, the sliding switch, just unscrews, and it's what's holding in the entire mechanism. So simply unscrew this, you'll see it's a small threaded metal connector. Set that aside, and then the whole switch pulls free. Now it's time to replace. These are all connected simply with friction. There's a line up here at the top, pull that off, and then here, You'll notice that there's two tabs, one on this side and one here on this side. Those need to be released simultaneously in order for the mechanism to pull away from the wiring. So if you put your thumbs here and press, you can pop them open. It might take a little bit of working it back and forth. Got it. It simply unplugs. You can see how dusty and dirty this one is and how bright and shiny the new switch going in will be. So it pulls out like that. I'm just going to pop the new one back in. Make sure those tabs 
pop out of the way enough to let it seat fully and that they lock in to hold it. There we go. Reconnect the line here at the top and it's back together. Now we just reinstall everything. This tucked up underneath here. I had a little trouble getting the switch to sit back in place and for the retaining screw to sink in, so I decided I would just speed this up for you. Just finger tight is fine. This is one of those situations where we want it tight, but not too tight. So that goes on. I'm gonna take my knob. It's triangular, so you just twist it till it lines in, push it all the way, reach up underneath and depress that button. Pop it all the way in. With the button in, now we just need to put the metal panels back in place. Start with this metal panel first. Remember, four screws, one, two, three, four. It sits right here. I'll go ahead and screw that in. You want to make sure you get it lined up with all the old holes. You're not punching new ones. You're putting it right back where it was so that the next panel will fit on as well. While I'm putting these four screws in, why don't you tell me in the comments below what other TJ projects you'd like to see me do a walkthrough for? Remember, we're not holding the world together with these screws, and they're just going into plastic. So just tight enough, just tight enough. Okay, with the metal panel back in place, and the knob back in place, we're gonna grab this. Remember, it's got some feet that need to lock in down here at the bottom. So we're gonna kind of rest those feet in place uh, as you twist it up. And actually, it might be easier See if I can get it all the way up here high. Yeah, and then set the feet in place. Aha! There we go, back in position. Two screws, one on each side. Screws back in place. Everything connected. Ready to go. Now it's time to reconnect the electricity. We should be fine. Fine, let's see what happens. If I twist it, we've got floorboards again. Here's the real test. Do I have headlights? Sure do. Headlights are working. Not only do I have headlights like I should, but I can turn them on and off every single time, just like I want them to be. Okay, this is the old switch. It's very dirty. But let me show you that button I was referring to. It's right here on top. It's even got some springs on it. When it's in the dashboard, it's positioned something kind of like this. So you're reaching in and around, and you're gonna be pushing that button down in order to release the light, actual the switch handle, the knob. So this button just pushes down, and internally, it releases the grip so that that knob can come out. This is how this thing works. It's got a couple different functions. The reason mine wasn't working is probably because of the corrosion in here. Maybe I could have cleaned it up and had it last a little bit longer, but it doesn't seem to me like something that's worth that effort. For $15, this is probably the original one. I'll just replace it and move on. This is the part number if you buy it from Standard. Thanks for watching Believe in Jeep. That's all I got for you this time. Make sure you give this a thumbs up if this video helped you out, and subscribe if you like this type of content. Also, check out BelieveInJeep.com for all the great off-road stuff on the internet with none of the boring stuff. That's all I got for you this time. Come back next time, and I'm going to show you how to send an SOS signal using your headlights.